from 18 to 29, okay? This, it's not always the same. It might be different levels, but I, I quite like the numbers here. I quite like the fact that it gets you one year before 30 and it's the panic station for a lot of guys. But from 18 to 29, you might make, remember the loading bar, you might make 0.2% of all the progress you will ever make in your life because you're building. It's the compound effect. Your 18th year, you worked so hard and you made miniature progress. Nothing really happened. In your 19th year, you made a slight little bit more, but not a lot. In your 20th, you actually made less. You were just like trying to figure shit out. It didn't really work. 21st, a few things moved forward, but not a lot. 22nd, you actually had to go back a step. You know, and this kind of trend continues. But what is happening along this whole way is it's not wasted work. It's like in the gym, you lift loads of weights, you build muscle, you build strength, and then you stop for two years and you lose all your gains, you've still got nuclei stored in the muscles. It's always there, it's like a bank account for muscles. So when you go back and you start lifting weights again, you can return that pretty quickly. It's the same with the compound effect of like hard work in whatever you do, whether it's gym, whether it's success, whether it's working on yourself or whatnot, it could be like facial exercises. Your face will remember those movements, it will get stronger over time, your bones will remodel. Like shit is kicking in, okay? So if for like 11 years, you're in the gym, but you're kind of like wasting your time along the way, you're like, I, d I did this for two years, didn't really work, I made some results, didn't really work, you're still making progress. It might be small, but eventually you'll figure it all out and it's going to click. That's what's happened to me. With success, you might be doing endless nights, endless weekends, 18 hour days, you're losing sleep and you're like, where's this actually going? I'm missing out on life. You're putting points on the board. You're investing, you're putting money in that bank account. But the money, the currency that you're using here is almost like sweat equity. It's the compound effect. It's something that you can call back upon later on down the line, okay? It's like, it's like with First Man now, like I'm growing. There's a lot of followers growing on YouTube. Well, there was a time when, like a year ago, I made that self-improvement September video. It got 850 views collectively. I've made the same video since. I, I, I haven't checked. I assume it's close to like four or 5,000 views now. And it's only been out for like two days, three days. Well, that, that's the compound effect paying off. It's not, oh, I worked hard today. I made a video and I put the right thumbnail on it and all that shit. No, the majority of the work, 90% of the work comes from a year ago, making videos consistently every two or three days, putting them out, building up a solid audience, you know, earning the respect of the people who are watching these videos, I hope, so that when I post, people go, oh, I'll watch that. You know, putting out enough content where I've reached enough people's screens when now they've subscribed and when a video pops up, they click on it. So now I get more views per video, which means that it's going to attract more people because it's going to reach more people's screens. It's just how the algorithm works. It's nothing special. And this is why when people say overnight success, like in a year's time, this channel, if it goes through the same growth, we'll have like 200,000, 250,000 subscribers. If it goes through the same growth again, one point whatever million. And then people will say, and this guy just arrived on the scene out of nowhere. It was like an overnight success story. It's like, no, well, there's a lot of stuff in the background. There's a lot of hard work that goes into it, which then builds up to where you're going to be. Okay. And from 18 to 29, the level of progress you might make, like I said, might be that big might be 0.5% of all the total progress you're ever going to make in your life. And then from 29 to 30, you might make 5% progress. And that's the entire game right there. And people go, well, how, how did I make 5% progress in one year? I made more progress in one year than I did in all those other years. Why didn't I just do what I did this year in all those other years? Imagine where I'd be now. And it's like, it doesn't work like that. Those years were necessary to put you in the position to have that type of year from 29 to 30. All the work that I've done since I was like 19 when I started my first stupid business, all that kind of like knowledge that I built up, all that experience, all those mistakes and failures and then the successes that you do have and you learn from it, the loans that I took when I was young that I have to pay off, the lessons that I learned, the shit that I was able to do with that money that I didn't really have at the time that allowed me to grow a little bit quicker, to learn some lessons quicker, to execute on a few things, okay? All the research that you're doing, all the gym sessions that I did, all the calisthenics I did for years, of course that calisthenics is now benefiting my body when I'm lifting weights. 
because I've got a good core fundamental foundation for strength. You see what I mean, guys? All this stuff adds up. It was building nuclei. It was building weird strength. It built up a really big back. So when I started lifting weights, that back got massive. It's shit like that. It's shit like that. Like I have quite naturally big triceps. It really pops. It's always done it since I was young. Well, I was doing a lot of pull-ups and stuff. I was doing a lot of dips. I was going on top of the bar when I was doing muscle-ups and I was doing push-ups like that. And it was building up my triceps. I used to do weights and boxing in the garage with my dad when we were really young, when I was really young. And I was like four or five years old and I was lifting weights and doing a bit of boxing. I was going out and doing hill sprints. It's not a shock that I then became a good footballer. I was practicing all the time. I was in the gym. I was, I was wheelbarrowing. I was like running up hills with the wheelbarrows. My legs were building up. It's not a shock that I was the fastest kid in my school. Like a lot of this shit pays off and it's the same in your life. 